So last year I took a look at Creator's flagship A9 sound card, and although it had a lot of good things going for it, it just missed the mark on some points, and that ultimately led to me not recommending the product. And Creative then came back to me and surprisingly offered me a sponsorship, and I said to myself, well basically my reviews always remain my reviews. I don't let any money or anything influence the outcome of those reviews, and I want you guys to have the best advice as consumers. And they came back to me and said, look, we really wanna make our brand the number one in sound cards and audio. And I said, sure, well, if we're going to do this, we're going to make sure that you start from the bottom up. And so what we have here today is Creative's bottom up approach in that they're making something that hits hard on a budget and is a portable USB device that works on not only PC, but also Mac and things like PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and other consoles. So what I'm gonna be doing with this thing is running you guys through all the objective numbers, which is the most important part with any audio device. And then we'll talk about all the other features this little thing has to offer, which is coming in at 60 USD. So getting straight into the nitty gritties, this is an all plastic build construction and it's got two rubberized feet on both ends, weighing in at 32 grams without the adapter in that it's got its base form with the Type-C adapter. And then if you include the Type-A adapter, which is the normal USB as we know it, it then weighs 37 grams. The dimensions are 10 mil by 40 mil by 75 mil long. So it is quite a small device, but it does pack good build quality where none of the knobs or switches felt loose. They all felt solid and everything felt good to click. Though at the front of the unit, you get a headphone import as well as a 3.5 mil mic import and then a hybrid in between, which has an included Toslink cable. So if your onboard audio or your laptop, for example, is missing optical, then this can work as a solution to fix that as well as work as a line in if you're recording, as well as having the ability to switch between the volume and the mixing function. So you can change between mixing the microphone balance and the audio balance on the headphone output. On the left hand side of that is an instant mic mute switch as well as mic volume control. And with that aside, we will go straight into the details of the frequency response curve. And looking at these numbers closely, we can see the channel balance between left and right channels is almost perfect. I only measured maximum of a 0.1 decibel drop. So basically the sound going to your left and right ears on your headphones is going to be equal out of the box. Also the distortion figures on the total harmonic distortion looked pretty good as well as the noise floor. It's some of the better numbers I've seen around here on the studio, even compared to that of high-end onboard audio solutions. And then on the frequency response curves, it was a relatively flat frequency response curve all the way through the lines from 20 hertz and onwards. There was a tiny bit of shake if we investigate it really closely, but it was nothing to worry about, especially when we compare it to a laptop, for example, and that onboard audio. But we'll get onto that later after we go through these numbers here, where the zero to 10 hertz was a minus six decibel roll off, and the 10 to 20 hertz was only 0.5 roughly decibel roll off. So basically, bass is still going to come through very well on these headphones, and you've got an ohm range for your headphones ranging from 16 to 300 ohm. So it will power most headphones out there on the market, though keep in mind if you wanna power orthos or 600 ohm hard to drive headphones, you may need another separate amplification solution. Though the crosstalk numbers out of the box were showing minus 65 to minus 70 decibel, which is pretty mediocre. I have seen a lot better going from minus 80 and lower in the past on different solutions. Minus 90 is the best I've seen, and that's phenomenal. But still, you're going to be able to distinguish between left and right perfectly fine on this device. Though that moves on now to onboard audio, which is sporting very similar numbers on a high-end solution, like the Z390 Taichi that we're comparing it against here. So basically what you can see out of this comparison is that if you've got high-end audio already, on your motherboard, for example, then this solution won't likely be for you. However, if you're going now to a laptop, and this is one of the scariest things because I've never tested onboard laptop audio before this video, and what we can see with these numbers here is that it's actually very scary. And I did measure this across two different devices on the line-ins just to get accurate numbers. And this was showing that basically onboard audio on this Dell laptop, I think it's an E7420, latitude it's a fourth gen laptop i recently picked it up in a deals hunt this was showing numbers that were basically the voice 
was the only good area that you could listen to reliably. So if you wanna to listen to music on this Latitude laptop, for example, it will, and I stress this, it will damage your ears if the volume is too loud, where I measured anywhere from a difference of the high and the low peaks from 80 decibels. So basically, if you're listening to music, you are damaging your ears on something with a really cheap onboard audio solution like this Latitude laptop. So this is where something like the G3 with its pretty good objective numbers will come in and help your ears in the long run, especially if you're a headphone user, which is what this is catering for. Now going back to the G3, for example, versus other audio solutions, I was testing out the software suite and it's actually pretty impressive what they're doing with it. They've got the game mix feature as we talked before where you can mix the voice or the game and prefer one over the other, which does work better on PlayStation 4 than it does on PC. When I did test it on PC, it does need a bit of improvement where for instance, if I'm in Counter-Strike trying to hear voices and I switch this to uh, basically to the attenuate the games, it'll also attenuate all the voices in CSGO. Uh, however, the other software like the Footsteps Enhance, which you can actually control via the button in the middle, you can just press this and it'll pretty much flash white, which means that it's now working. That'll set the default Footstep Enhancer on. So basically if you plug it into a console, you can still benefit from this effect. And what we'll do now is roll onto a Counter-Strike demo where I'm playing one round with Footstep Enhancer off versus one round with it on. Though going through some of the other effects here, you can change things like crystal surround with the SBX profile and also assign that to a hotkey with the middle button. So if you wish to turn this on and off on the fly, you can do so by double clicking the button instead of clicking it once. And so you can change things like bass, surround, and also the crystallizer effect and make those in adjustments from zero to 100 to get the desired effect. I find it works really well in RPGs if you wanna make a different experience. Though do keep in mind software like that is essentially what they call color in the audio world. A lot of people don't actually like it, but it is there and it can work in situations, especially like EQing, that's one of my favorite. And on that note of EQing, if you do change it to your favorite EQ and you wanna have that on and off, then you can set that as the default and then turn it on and off quickly with the button instead of having footstep enhancer as your default profile for this button. Though changing over now to the other side, that's the microphone import, where if you're gaming, especially on cheap onboard audio, you're going to be getting noise creeping in, especially if you're using harder to drive microphones. So what we decided to use today was the Corsair Virtuoso broadcast mic, where that's actually a little bit harder to drive than say for instance a V-Motor Boom Pro or a lot of standard microphones that you'll get on headsets. And this microphone in supports up to 96 kilohertz, 24 bit, just like the output, which also supports 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. And so let's show you guys a quick test between the onboard audio on the Z390 Taichi, which is a higher end solution versus this little G3. So now we're testing the microphone on the Z390 Taichi motherboard from ASRock. We have had to boost the volume, however, with plus 30 dB and a volume level of 85, even to get this microphone to power to these levels. This is the Corsair Broadcaster microphone on the Virtuoso plugged directly into the G3. Uh, on a serious note though, this is uh, what it will sound like with no effects turned on and the volume set to default out of the box. So we'll quickly see if you guys can hear any noise. So now we're testing out the voice morph feature, which we can change to any number of things, like an infiltrator, or we can change it to someone who's emo, 
That is a feature that's enabled on the G3 as well. And now we're recording with the smart volume feature in the Sound Blaster recording panel, as well as having the acoustic echo cancellation thingy turned on. But let's try out a couple of effects now to compare it to the original two sources. And here's what the microphone will sound like, the Virtuoso microphone, with a improved vocal clarity as well as vocal uh, presence, the preset turned on. So this is actually a microphone equalizer, which I've never tried before. So coming out of this, if you guys want to have some fun with that voice morph technology, it's actually pretty fun to use, but people will get sick of it pretty quick. I did try this out in games, especially in Dota 2, and people were like, yo, can you turn that stuff off. <laughs> that wasn't the exact term that they said, but it can get annoying pretty quickly. So the power is yours with that. You do have the option to turn that on, which is a cool little neat feature. Though in terms of the voice clarity and also the boost in the equalizer for the mic in, I thought that added more noise. As opposed to the smart volume feature, which I thought was very handy. That's basically going to control your voice and make it equalize straight out of the box, whatever microphone you have. So that was the best feature I thought on the software side for the mic import, where if you plug in any mic, just hit smart volume, it's going to control that for you and also do so while pretty much giving out the lowest noise I heard in these comparisons. With the Virtuoso broadcast mic, it did have a hard time being driven on that onboard audio. And so I had to set it quite high and then the noise was starting to creep in. So it's good to see that this little G3 here does have a pretty powerful mic in amp on board. So your friends are gonna be hearing you white noise free. And now it's time for the conclusion with the G3 and running all the tests here, I was very surprised with this unit. It's exactly what I wanted Creative to do with their budget options. And that's pretty much offer everything and hit all those boxes pretty well. It didn't hit everything the best I've seen with the objective numbers, but it hit them really good enough to make it a viable option for me to recommend. And when we look at the mic import, that was very solid for a $60 solution. The portability is great, the construction's great, and then the objective numbers on the headphone out also posted solid figures. Even though the crosstalk wasn't the best I've seen, I can't really critique them that hard considering how small this unit is. So Creative have done a great job to implement all this hardware in a little unit that's going to serve you well if you wanna be a competitive gamer or if you wanna have a bit of fun with the software side or if you wanna mix things up with that game mix technology. And also packed with all the other features like muting your mic on the fly, volume changes on the mic, volume out, and also the mixing tab and the equalizer hotkey, as well as the optical out, this thing's really giving a lot of value in a small unit like this. So I can thoroughly recommend this little thing for someone, especially if you've got a very cheap onboard audio solution. As we saw with those latitude numbers for that Dell laptop, they were absolutely horrible. So please guys, do your ears a favor because it's one of the five senses and you wanna keep that and keep it in good shape. And headphones driven by very cheap onboard amps is the quickest way to damage your ears, especially if you're listening at loud volumes. As we saw for those 80 decibel differences, that's 80 decibels, that's massive in the differences between the lowest and high points. So basically, if you're listening to music, you may not even notice that your ears on a cheap solution, for example, is giving you the damage that it's actually giving you. But you will notice in the form of your ears ringing afterwards. So remember guys, very bad distortion does cause uh, problems for your ears very quickly. And it's good to see that this thing had very low distortion and it had some really good numbers. So it's a great solution for someone who wants to get good audio on a budget, and this is what I like to see Creative doing. If you guys enjoyed today's review, then be sure to hit that like button for us, and also let us know in the comments section below what's your experience with audio, both headphones and speakers. I prefer speakers personally because, again, that's an extra layer of defense for your ears, plus I like to move around and listen to music a lot, though I love hearing your thoughts and opinions because if you're a competitive gamer, then technically headphones is going to be better than speakers due to the distance that that sound has to travel from the speakers to your ears, which will give you a competitive advantage if you're using headphones versus speakers.
but I don't really play competitive anymore, but love reading your thoughts and opinions. As always, and speaking of thoughts and opinions, we got the question of the day, which comes from Gammy224, and they ask, why do you always use extremely cheap parts and use AliExpress for links? Uh, so this has got to do with uh, basically when I'm, especially when I'm using Xeons, this question came from the dual Xeon setup that I used. Uh, whenever I'm using Xeons, I always put AliExpress links because AliExpress has got great prices on used Xeon CPUs that anyone in the world can get access to. And I personally buy a lot of these Xeons off AliExpress and use them for my own builds, hence why I can recommend it a lot. So it's great value. And a lot of the times when I pick up local deals as well, if I can't replicate that price and it's pretty cheap on AliExpress, then I'll also put that link in the description below. So someone who say can't get access to deals locally can then get a similar build or price to what I got here on the channel. Anyway, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. And if you've enjoyed the video and you've stayed this far and you wanna keep getting the content the moment it drops, don't forget to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now, bye.